Okay, so now we're going to sketch a graph of a linear function when given only the equation. And we're going to do this by finding two points on this graph. And we're going to find two special points. The first one is going to be the point of the horizontal intercept. The second set of points that we're going to need are the set of points at the vertical intercept. So, at the horizontal intercept, this is the point at which the line is going to cross the x-axis. Because remember, the horizontal axis is always x, vertical is always y. So, at the point where the line crosses the x-axis, y is always going to be 0. And that kind of makes sense, because any point directly on the x-axis is a point where y is equal to 0. So, right away, I already know that my horizontal intercept is going to have y is equal to 0. The next step is figuring out where on this x-axis that point lies. Well, if I know y is equal to 0, I have enough information to plug into this equation. And remember, as we discussed, y is just another way of writing f of x. So I could call this, instead of calling y is equal to 0, um, I'll use our new notation and call this f of x is equal to 0, just to confuse you. So if f of x is equal to 0, what is x? Well, I can take this equation, I can plug it in, so I, instead of f of x I'm going to write 0 is equal to 2x plus 7, and now it's just a matter of isolating x. So I subtract 7 from both sides, so that's going to give me negative 7 is equal to 2x, because these cancel out, and then I divide both sides by 2, and I get a negative 7 over 2 is equal to x. And I'll turn that into a decimal to make it a little easier. So this is negative 3.5 is equal to x. So at the horizontal intercept, when f of x or y is equal to 0, our x is equal to negative 3.5. So let's find that point. So we know y is going to equal to 0. X is going to be negative 3.5, so this is negative 2, negative 3, and right in between there, that's going to be negative 3.5. And I'll erase this so not to confuse you there. So there's one point on the graph. Now to draw a line, we need a minimum of two points. So we have the horizontal intercept, now we're going to look for the vertical intercept. Now, the vertical intercept is the point at which the line is going to cross the y-axis. Now, any point directly on the y-axis is a point where x is equal to 0. So it's the opposite. In the horizontal intercept, it was y, or f of x, that was equal to 0. Here, it's going to be x that's equal to 0. So right away, I can set x equal to 0. Well, when x is 0, what is... Oops. When x is 0, what is y. And again, remember y is just synonymous with f of x. So to find out what the y is, I can plug in x for 0 here. So I get f of x is equal to 2 zero times 2, 0 plus 7. Uh, 0 times 2 is just 0. So f of x or y is equal to 7. And that's kind of nifty. If you notice that the vertical intercept is actually the same as this number right here. And we'll get into that a lot more when we talk, talk about functions in unit six. So my y is going to be seven, and suddenly I have my second point. So where x is zero, which is along this line here, y is equal to seven. And now I have enough to draw a line. So from here, all the way to here. Oh, that's not perfect. No, that's close enough. Okay. 
There we go. And to show the fact that this line doesn't end, that it continues on, I'm going to put arrows on both ends, just to say that this line actually does go on forever. And then it's customary to actually label our lines, so I'm going to label this with the function that it represents. So f of x is equal to 2x plus 7. There you go. Now another way, or another word, model intercept, we actually will be calling this the x-intercept. And that's kind of a nicer name because we're always dealing with the x-axis. And here, we're not going to really be calling it the vertical intercept very much. We'll be calling this the y-intercept. So the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. Good. So try this one on your own. Uh, pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll show you the answer. All right, there you are. So we have a y-intercept of negative 2 and a x-intercept of, this is actually a half. So look at this. This y-intercept of negative 2, look at that, corresponds exactly with this number right here. Pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. So here's another example. Which graph has a rate of change of 1 half and a vertical intercept of six, and justify your answer. Well, let's look at this vertical intercept, because that's an easy one to spot. Uh, let's see which graph has a vertical intercept of six. So remember, vertical intercept is talking about the y-axis, and this graph here hits it right at six, as does this graph right here. So that's really not gonna help us. The key here is gonna be this rate of change of a half. We need to figure out which graph has a rate of change of a half. And there's actually a cheat we can use here, uh, we discussed in the second slide the differences between negative and positive rate of change. A negative rate of change is one where the line is going to the right and down, and a positive rate of change is one that's going to the right and up. And as you can see here, only one of these graphs would be a positive rate of change, and since this does represent a positive rate of change, we're probably dealing with this graph here. But let's just double check. So let's check our rate of change here. Again, to find rate of change, I pick any two points, and I'll pick these two points here because they're nice and easy because they line up exactly with uh, the vertical and horizontal lines here. And then I'm going to find the rate of change in between. So the rate of change of my dependent variable here is going to be this right here. And this is a rate of change of, so this distance goes from 8 to 10, so that's a rate of change of 2. And... The rate of change of the independent variable is from 4 minutes to 8 minutes, so that's a rate of change of 4. Assuming this is minutes, we don't really know. Uh, so again, my rate of change would be the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable, which in this case, my dependent variable is 2 over 4, which is equal to a half. So this is definitely the graph that we're looking for. So try this one on your own quick, pause the video here, and when you come back, we'll go through the answer. Okay, so this one's asking us which graph has a rate of change of five, negative five, and a vertical intercept of 100. Well, this vertical intercept really isn't helping us because they both have a vertical intercept of 100, uh, but this negative five definitely helps us. And again, we can look at these two graphs. This graph, because it goes to the right and up, is a positive rate of change. This one, because it goes to the right and down, is negative. So chances are we're dealing with this one. Uh, but just to double check, we take two points and then find the rate of change of the dependent variable, in which case this one is 100, and the rate of change of the independent variable, where this one is 20. And then we can go 100 over 20 because we're taking the dependent variable over the independent variable, and that gives us, uh, oh, sorry. So here, because we have a rate of change of negative 100, and I almost made that mistake myself. So because here, the distance isn't increasing, the distance is decreasing. So this, this is key, and, and try not to, to forget this, as I just did, that this is a decrease, so this is a change, rate of change, a negative rate of change, so this would be negative, a change of negative 100, making this negative 100, and this would be negative 5, because we go 100 divided by 20, or negative 100 divided by 20, and that gives us negative 5. So this is clearly the one that we're looking at, or this is clearly the one that they're asking for. All right.
So try this one yourself. This is our, our final example. Uh, this question asks to show the total cost for a house call by an electrician for up to six hours. So here we're looking at the cost of an electrician versus the time that they spend in your house. So using this graph, I want you to tell me how much it would cost for an electrician for six hours work. So give that a try yourself. Take 30 seconds or a minute to do that. Okay, so uh, to find out how much the electrician will cost at six hours, we need to actually find six hours. So here on the domain, so on the x-axis, this represents time, we'll find six hours. We follow that up all the way here. And then we notice that this point is in line with the vertical axis or the dependent variable here. So what we need to know is what this point is because this point associates with the six hours. So here we have 120, 240, 360. So we're jumping up by 120. This is between that. So this is gonna be a jump of 60. So we're looking at $300. And that's it, guys.